Hey everybody, welcome to a poolside episode of Mondays. That's right, poolside. I am here in Virginia, actually in Charlottesville, Virginia. Just finished up Operation Friendly Fire here and had a blast playing. By the way, if you guys have not played at Augusta Airsoft and you are anywhere in Virginia, period, because it's pretty much drivable from just about anywhere, you have to come check it out. This is actually going to be an all Virginia episode. Definitely come. And plus, there's also really cool things to see. And if you've never been to this part, the, the, the view, the mountains, the hills, everything are great. Big thanks to my buddy John and his son Chris for letting me crash at this place. No, this is not my pool. Sorry to disappoint. Really, it's not. Anyway, <laughs> enough of that. Let me tell you guys what's going on since I'm outside. I hope you can hear like the cicadas and all kinds of crazy things going on. Before I forget, uh, next week, this coming week, I will be at CPX Paintball in Chicago, right outside of Chicago, doing their game. I guess Operation Coding Thunder is the name of it. And it will be on August the 5th and the 6th. That is a Saturday and a Sunday, two day event out there. It'll be myself, Jet the Desert Fox, Unicorn Leah, and a ton of fun. Um, I'll be rocking a Tipman this time. So I'll never think I've ever played a full game with a Tipman. So this will be interesting to go try that out. It's gonna be fun, I'm, I'm excited, it's gonna be a good one. Anyway, so that's where I'm gonna be and what's going on with that. Also, any more updates? Oh, I do have something in my pocket real quick. And no, it's not money for you. Sorry to disappoint again on that. I do have, again, shameless self-promotion, Corgis and the logos, guys, are in stock. Uh, these are going quick. And I just got the new PVC logos in if you guys haven't checked it out. They're on the web store. Link is in the description below if you guys want to get that. Help support the show. It's so awesome. Anyway, enough of me trying to hawk my wares, tell you where I'm going and all that stuff like I always do every week. It's time to get on into what you're really here for, and that's your questions in the Tipman, huh, ironically, mail call. Blitzkrieg Airsoft UK writes, I have a question regarding meds. The site that I regularly go to has a 30 meter med for sniper rifles and a 15 meter med for DMRs. I feel like the DMR med should be increased to 30 meters as well. What do you think? All right, so time for a little bit of, before I lose the light, by the way, the sun's going down. Time to go over a little bit of acronyms. So med stands for minimum engagement distance, which means the, the distance you have to be away from your opponent before you can pull the trigger. So 50 meter med, our 30 meter med means around 100 feet, give or take, before you can pull the trigger. Now, if they're within that, you can't. So that's like sniper rifles, things like that. Um, 15 meters is about half that. We're looking at, you know, close to 50 feet for the DMR. DMR stands for Designated Marksman Rifle. In the real world, it typically stands for, it's a, a rifle chambered in 308 or a larger caliber round that's designed to reach out farther, but it's still semi-automatic. So they, they kind of limit the power on those. Again, I don't know what your FPS limits are, what your power is uh, allowed for those things. So it could be right, it could be wrong. But let me tell you what I think of here in the United States. Typically sniper rifles are right around 500 feet per second and they're limited to that 100 foot minimum engagement, which is that 30 meters. That is pretty safe. The reason they do that is at that distance when you're shooting, let's, our normal FPS here is around 400, by the way, for an outdoor field. So by the time your BBs traveled that 100 extra feet, it's lost the energy, it's lost the power to where it's hitting the target at or less than the power you would get of shooting someone near point blank with a 400 feet per second gun. So it's effectively the BB striking, you're getting that same amount of energy and safety. In fact, it's about 10 feet really with the 400 feet per second, roughly. There's calculations out there. I know some of you internet wizards will be down there, give me the exact numbers and I appreciate that, I really do. But uh, that's roughly how it works. So with the DMR, I'm assuming your limits are maybe 450 if they're cutting that distance in half. That's still gonna give you the same safe impact of the BB or they call joule, which is a measurement of energy and how it transfers into you. Uh, the same joule energy at that distance. So you're getting 50 feet for that energy to decay or fall away or go away from that BB before it hits the target. So that's what is there. I'm just kind of throwing some numbers out. Now, if your power levels are different than that, there could be some safety concerns. And again, that's why minimum engagement distances are in place. It is all about safety and being safe and playing and making sure that when you're getting shot from five feet away or you're getting shot from 100 feet away, that, that gun that gets to shoot more powerful, that sniper rifle that gets 100 extra FPS of power, uh, isn't overdoing it and, and gonna potentially be hitting that target or that opponent a lot harder. So that's it. So again, I don't know your FPS limits. Uh, it sounds 
about right. But again, if you're looking at 500 feet per second for a DMR and a sniper rifle, and the DMR minimum engagement is half that, then yes, I would say you guys probably need to make an adjustment on that in distance because uh, there's there's definitely a huge advantage for that DMR. So anyway, that's my thought, and that's a little education on what DMR and uh, minimum engagement or MED stands for. Ray Boss writes, does it matter what brand BB I used? Are certain brands better than others? Yes, it absolutely does. And yes, certain brands are better than others. And it really comes down to good quality BBs versus cheap ones. If they are clear and colored, those two together, got a little bug flying on me here, uh, then you're probably not using a good BB. In fact, I would recommend buying a good BB from an airsoft shop. That's the most important thing. Um, also, when it comes to BBs, there are different levels. There are about half a dozen or less factories that are making BBs out there. That's it, really. And so all these companies are going to those same factories, but that doesn't mean they're all the same. They all order different level polishes, powers, all that thing. They actually order uh, uh, different weights, different mixtures to use. So yes, they could be wildly different coming out of the same factory. So even though, you know, I know company X and company Z both make their BBs at, at this one company and, and they both get them done. They just put them in different bottles, whatever. Well, it doesn't mean they're the same. If you do have premium BBs, it is very important. The polish is important, the quality of, of how they're made, the bubbles. There's so many things, so many reasons to get good BBs or not good BBs. So yes, um, there are certain ones. For me, I stick with the major brands. Uh, I do shoot heavyweights, so I'm looking usually at using like Elite Force 3.2s. I use the G&G &G heavyweights, the the ones that are north of three, I think they're three threes or three ones, three ones, I think. They're gray in color. And I try to go with the bios because I do play a lot of outdoor fields that require bio BBs or Milsom events that require bio BBs. I've had really good luck with those two in most every gun. I've never had a jam or anything like that. That is my experience. I know there are BB zealots out there. I know I'm about to get like the BB just social justice warriors down there in the comment section just trash and going, don't buy this brand, buy that brand. I'm not saying those brands are the best. I'm not saying any other brand I didn't mention isn't the best. I've used other BBs from plenty of different brands from a high powered airsoft all over and they're all equally good. I just settle on those because they're biodegradable and they're readily available and easy for me to purchase just about anywhere. And I can set my gun and in between those two weights, they, they pretty much fly the same. So that's it. That's pretty much my thoughts on that and pretty much how BBs work when it comes to quality and uh, how they're made. Arian Reigns rides, hey Jonathan, I was injured a few months ago and I was left mute as a result. I can hear fine, but I'm unable to speak. I'm learning ASL at the moment, but communication is difficult. I really want to get into airsoft, but I'm also hesitant to do so. I can see problems with not being able to verbally call hits, etc. Do you think this would be safe? Based on your experience, can you foresee any problems with me playing? Edit, safety kills can be an issue, I think. So yes, first off, safety kills. This could be an issue with your field. I would talk to your field owner about that, the rules and everything before you get into it. Uh, basically, I'm gonna write that down and talk to them. Make sure people are aware that that's at there. But typically, I'm not having to use safety kills that often. I usually stay a little farther away. The way you play can dictate if you need a safety kill. That is absolutely it. Calling your hits, it's usually a visual system, audible as well, but there, I'd say nine times out of 10, you're not gonna hear me yell hit unless it's someone from really far away, um, I will designate with the red rag. Dead rags are it. So hopefully your field's using dead rags and that's something important and they're actually doing that and you should be fine. Again, with all of this in play, since your hearing's fully intact, you shouldn't have any trouble. Even learning ASL, there's gonna be a lot of people that aren't gonna do that. And I do apologize for the cicadas, speaking of hearing, um, that you should not have an issue. But again, I want to go back around, talk to the field owner, make sure they're aware, make sure they share that information with the other players so they're aware and there's no concerns there. But dead rag, totally good. You shouldn't have any issue calling hits. And safety kills, like I said, if you're not just running into buildings and CQ being like crazy and getting within that, that 10 foot minimum engagement distance, if that's what your field has, you shouldn't have a problem at all. And man, welcome to Airsoft, by the way. Congratulations. And hopefully one day I'll come wherever you are and we'll go play together. All right, as night falls here at the poolside, yes, it's getting dark and really dark. If you guys watch this, it's definitely like the, the shifting thing and the light, I've got one little light. It's almost like I'm lit by candlelight. Anyway, enough of that. We're talking about the video recommendation of the week here, Code Red Headsets video recommendation of the week. And this one is coming from Swamp Sniper. It's been a long time since I've talked about Swamp Sniper. I love Christopher over at Balahack. And as I promised in the first of this video, this is an all Virginia episode. Well, not all, because all the questions 
didn't come from Virginia. But the, the video and everything we talk about did come from Virginia. And this one is Snipers Kill Everything. Doesn't matter. It's in the title of it. from the Battle of Irene they held at Balahack. If you guys didn't know, Christopher is actually the owner of Balahack Airsoft as well. Also known, like I said, as the Swamp Sniper. And he does some really great DMR and sniping. And if you guys didn't know this too, he actually does or has done some video editing on the professional side of things. Like, unlike me, who's just an amateur YouTuber, he's gone full pro, so his videos are very well done. I love his intros. I mean, he grabs you and drags you right in at the beginning, hooks it up. Also on him, I just want to give a little side note. Of course, let me just say this. This video I got playing over my shoulder. Um, uh, you'll have, the, it'll be in the recommendation. It'll be in the description below, I mean. If you guys like it, go check out his channel. Hit the sub button. He needs more subs over there, and let him know I sent you. Also, he's got a, something going on right now. This is kind of a timely thing, depending on you're watching the video. He's working on an Airsoft Exoskeleton project. And that's one of these projects where you build it and I think it's like got a, a prize attached to it. Well, anyway, I'll throw a link to that video below too. It's a little bit longer where he talks about the project. He's got some entries already. So if you're mechanically inclined and you've got an engineering brain, it might be something you could enter. I would love to see an airsoft exoskeleton. But anyway, that's it. Definitely check him out. Swamp Sniper on YouTube. Head over there. Again, great stuff. If you guys like sniping or just DMR stuff or just funny, creative videos, he's definitely a channel you want to check out. Well, everybody, that's it for this week. As always, thank you so much for hanging out and having a good time here on Mondays. Thank you for letting me watch the sunset and my creepy, like, mass... Like, seriously, I feel like I'm telling ghost tales right now with my light. <laughs> but anyway, also, I want to say big thanks down there in the comment section below. You guys are so cool. You know I can't answer every question, but you do such a fantastic job helping each other out. And if you want to get your question on the show, it is super simple. All you got to do is just put it in the comment section below, like I mentioned, and vote up your favorites. Hit that thumbs up button. I do read as many questions as I can, pretty much all of them, every single week before I film the next week's show. So I do remember the ones I see repeating each week. So please be persistent every week, and I will try my darn just to get yours answered on a future episode if I don't do it right out of the gate. Anyway, until next week, on next Monday when this show is out, go out, play some airsoft, have some fun, come to Virginia and hang out by a pool, even though it's dark and it's got cicadas over here. But no matter what you do, call your freaking hits.